Today we are going to go over an exciting advanced technique, the non-stall. Non-stalls are not moves in and of themselves, but rather an alternative trajectory that we can implement during some of the moves that we have already been training. Many roped artists like to use non-stalls during overlord wraps, dragon wraps, and even sunrises. We will be using the overlord as an example today, as there are two opportunities to remove stalls. I find that it is very helpful to already have mastered a sunrise before tackling this concept, as we will have learned to get accustomed to pivoting in unconventional ways. I also want to let everyone know that I finished my complete online course called The Guide to Becoming a Graceful Roped Artist that will help refine techniques that we have learned in these YouTube videos, as well as break down some brand new moves. The link is in the description. Okay, let's get started. First we need to define what a stall is. Stalls occur when we are casting the dart out and then pulling it back so that it retraces the same trajectory that it first traveled in. Here are some examples of stalls. So, when we remove a stall from a move, we are finding a way to skip the process of retracing our trajectory while still guiding the dart to end up in the same place as it would have if we had completed the stall. Instead, we will be guiding the dart to complete a rotation while simultaneously pivoting our body. Let's review a standard overlord. See those stalls? There are two of them. Now let's watch an overlord with a second stall taken out. During this version, we are no longer using the stall to bring the rope dart to travel to our second elbow. Instead, we are rotating our body 180 degrees while simultaneously guiding the dart to complete a spin behind us and catching the rope with our second elbow. Let's practice a basic overlord a few times to warm up. Now let's complete the first part of our overlord and stop when we get to this point. The rope should be resting on our anchor elbow. We should check to make sure that we have plenty of rope during this step. Okay. Now we are going to break the next step into two parts, then try to combine them. First, let's practice guiding our dart behind us so that it completes one spin and lands on our elbow. It is the quick raising of our elbow that gives the dart the momentum it needs to complete the spin. Okay. Now let's practice the second part on its own. We are going to take our anchor foot and step in front of us, pivoting 180 degrees. Cool. Finally, we combine the two parts. We will raise our anchor elbow, guiding the dart to rotate, and immediately take our anchor foot and step forward, pivoting 180 degrees. We will catch the rope on our lead elbow, instead of letting it wrap around our anchor elbow. Let's practice this step. Finally, we pivot into wheel plane and execute an elbow shot just like the one at the end of the regular Overlord. Once we are ready, we try and do the whole move without pausing in between steps. As we smooth this out, we will notice that our anchor foot ends up pivoting 360 degrees in order to accommodate the whole move. Okay, we successfully learned to remove the second stall. I highly suggest drilling this version on its own for a few weeks before moving on. Once we feel comfortable, we can explore taking out the other stall. Here is what this step looks like. Okay, let's start by getting into wheel plane on a downward swing. The key is going to be to let all of our rope loose so that we have enough slack to complete the move. We are going to throw all of our rope under our lead armpit and out in front of us while stepping forward with our lead foot. Immediately, we step behind us with our anchor foot and pivot 180 degrees. We try and catch the rope on our anchor elbow. Let's practice this step on its own quite a few times. Notice how all of my rope has been released, and I am having to point my elbow up so that the dart doesn't hit the floor. 
Okay, now we will notice that we are in the same spot that we were in when we started to drill the other non-stall. Let's practice executing the second non-stall from this position a few times. When we have drilled all these steps separately and feel ready, we can try to put it all together and execute the full double non-stall overlord. Here it is again in real time. Sweet! That is the double non-stall overlord. It's a pretty complicated move, so please be patient. I will be creating more videos with other examples of non-stalls. Please also be careful when practicing and make sure to stretch before and after your drills. I have had an ankle injury for the past three months now, and I'm going to have to let it heal before shooting the next video. I hope this helped!